LNG leaders in association with Chenier Energy. You know, you're talking about uh, kind of global futures contracts. It seems like people are looking at standardization also for the, the kind of carbon neutral side of LNG. Uh, I mean, how mm -hmm. do you think is the most effective way that we're going to get there? Yeah, it's a problem because it's a voluntary market. It's hard to standardize it. So for right now, we see carbon markets specifically being traded as OTC instruments, non-futures traded. And so that's, that's the predominant way that the market has been uh, engaged with each other. Um, so really not in a, in a futures structure. We see that that will eventually develop uh, into a futures structure contract um, that, uh, that the, the marketplace will need, especially as more participants um, uh, enter the marketplace. They may not have counterparty credit with each other, and so um, so they will uh, they will want to find a way to use futures where they can they can use the exchange as the credit uh, the credit counterparty or the credit mitigant uh, risk mitigation tool for for that marketplace. Hello and welcome to LNG TV. I'm Ali Vance and this is Will Dawson. And today we are delighted to be joined by Joe Raya for this episode of LNG Leaders. Joe is Chief Commercial Officer of ABEX Exchange, a newly established commodities exchange company. And Joe is a veteran of the global commodity future market, having previously been MD and Head of Global Commodity Futures at Goldman Sachs and Global Head of Energy and Metals, Futures and Options for CME and NYMEX. Well, Joe, welcome to the show. You're joining us from New Jersey. How are things going? I'm good, uh, Ali. Good morning to you and Will. Well, I guess um, we'll start with ABEX Exchange. It's been, um, what, a couple of years building it up, but how is it? Well, tell us a little bit more about the company and then how much you're enjoying it. Yeah, it's an interesting move back into the traditional exchange business uh, from where I was at Goldman, uh, uh, but I spent 12 years at the NYMEX back in uh, between 2001 and 2012. Um, ABEX is taking both a traditional look at exchanges uh, and building a new exchange and clearinghouse under the MAS in Singapore, uh, but also looking at more technology and what we see is a better technology model for not only commodity trading, but also for futures markets and better risk management tools. So uh, we, uh, we started out about three years ago looking at the LNG business. Uh, we could probably go into that a bit more, but uh, from a regulatory perspective, we applied to the MAS in Singapore and received our RMO, which is a regulated market, market operator license last year. And then just recently, two weeks ago, uh, received our clearinghouse license, which is really a big deal. And that's the, the crux of an, any exchange and, uh, and trading entity for futures markets where the clearinghouse sits as the risk management tool um, for the marketplace. So yeah, it's, uh, it's been, uh, it's not easy work. It's very capital intensive, uh, but we, we were very uh, excited about the, the changes over the re recent past few weeks. So is it ready to go now? I mean, there are obviously a lot of licenses to put in place, but is the platform ready for trading? Yeah, so we've been engaged with the marketplace, the commercial players in the marketplace, which is uh, which is the, the, the really the foundation of any uh, futures markets for trading and for trading our contracts or futures contracts. Uh, we also are engaged with our clearing members. So uh, traditional futures markets have as part of their uh, connectivity between the customers and the clearinghouse, um, they have FCMs or futures commission merchants, which are the bank and non-bank clearing firms that really serve as the initial stop, so to speak, of the risk train between the customer and the uh, and the exchange. So, um, so we're, we're you know that we're in the process of engaging with the clearing members now um, and connecting with them in the exchange. So that that is the next step in the process before we go live. It's an incredibly exciting time. Um, but Joe, it'd be really useful maybe to sort of set the scene um, a little bit. Um, would it be possible to kind of share a little bit more about sort of the evolution of the LNG markets um, and specifically the LNG futures markets? Yeah, the LNG futures markets is what we're, we're focused on, but that obviously has evolution in the, the genesis of LNG markets in general and trading markets. And I'm sure a lot of your viewers know that uh, you know, the LNG market has mostly been a term structured market from pricing perspective for uh, for many, many, many years. I mean, I was a merchant marine officer and uh, sailed on ships and a lot of my classmates went on some of the very first LNG ships that were built by Energy Transfer Corporation back in the day that sailed between uh, Malaysia and, and Japan. And those those ships were on basically um, uh, like a railroad track between the, between the load board and the discharge board. And those pricing contracts 
uh, went for 20 plus years. And, and the instruments that they used for, for hedging or for determining the price of that landed LNG cost in, in Japan or South Korea or China was based on mostly crude contracts, crude oil contracts, and, and specifically Brent crude. Brent crude is a great global benchmark for uh, for oil markets. Um, and in fact, when I was at the NYMEX, we you know we always competed with them day in and day out with our WTI contract. But uh, for pricing LNG, it really doesn't work. There's um, you know the correlations between LNG and, and Brent crude are absent quite a quite a bit of uh, direct co connectivity. So the marketplace used other instruments uh, like the JCC, which is the Japanese crude cocktail, which again is a blended basket of crude pricing for LNG. Uh, and then uh, over the past five years or so, uh, pricing uh, markets were developed by, JK, uh, by ICE with JKM, the Japanese Korea marker, which is, again is a marker uh, and doesn't have really direct ties into physical LNG cargoes. So, so as, as time has developed over, over the past 20, 25 years and the increase in LNG usage and, and shipping has and development and production has grown tremendously, um, the marketplace has moved mostly from uh, almost all term uh, again, those contracts were 20, 25 years, and they used those contracts to, to finance the, the, the necessary infrastructure to, uh, to develop and produce natural gas, uh, to develop the liquefaction plants, and to, uh, to, uh, to develop the, the regasification plants up in, um, in, the, in the load area, uh, the discharge areas. So again, those were really, um, those were really the predominant way the market was, was used. And we've seen over the past four or five years, mostly a move to uh, between from, from term contracts to spot contracts and the short term contracts. So if you look at the GIGNL um, uh, data on, on how much or how much of that marketplace is now spot, it's, it's, it's passing 40%. So it's a big move. The problem with that is all the, those molecules that are on the water have little or no um, way to hedge that risk, right? Again, do you want to use crude? Do you want to use a marker? Do you want to use pipeline gas? Really lacking correlation between um, between the actual physical cargo uh, and a pricing instrument. So we, we surveyed the marketplace and uh, pretty, pretty extensively over the past three to four years and have seen a desire uh, for the traders that are in the, that are now entering this marketplace as a spot market to, to, to find a way to better hedge their risk in, in move, the movement of LNG. And that brings us on nicely to what's happening now, and what is the what is the the, the markets like at the moment, and the and tomorrow's markets, I guess. And um, what about Abex Exchange? What does that offer that other exchange companies don't? Yeah, for right now, there is no LNG futures contract that is a global uh, benchmark. So you have instruments like financially settled products, uh, like index related products. Uh, again, give some. Uh, sense of, of risk management or the ability to, to mitigate that risk for that for that cargo, but nothing directly correlative to to that cargo. So uh, so again, we we went out, Abex went out and and uh, and surveyed the marketplace extensively, and we've developed two futures contracts that we will be launching uh, on a global basis uh, when we launch the exchange. And so that's really what uh, the interaction between the the. The, the trading community told us it was really necessary and needed, and they didn't have that uh, that correlation or that direct connectivity into the into a pricing benchmark. So, um, so, so this is really something that uh, that we're looking to looking forward to develop. And also, uh, we think that the pricing components, given the volatility we've seen in the marketplace over the past um, probably two year to two years, has really been an important uh, just shown the important need for these products in the marketplace. So speaking of firsts, I mean, goodness, it feels right now that almost every week we're hearing about um, green LNG, we're hearing about carbon neutral LNG, mm -hmm. um, carbon offset LNG cargoes, um, call them what you wish, but um, be interested to, to kind of get your take on this firstly. Um, but also, presumably, this means more and more uh, LNG market participants moving into carbon markets in order to sort of offset these cargoes. Be great to kind of get your take and, and see more about the evolution of these markets. Yeah, there's been a lot of uh, movement in that space. Will I would say that um, it's important that those firms that do enter into or or look to offset LNG cargoes and and deliver what they call LNG neutral or carbon neutral LNG uh, to, to to the discharge ports wherever they are uh, do in fact uh, you know 
and I think that the companies that are doing it are you know, obviously very large energy companies. And so um, they have reputational risk and, and want to really make sure that they, they, they find the right solutions to, to buy and sell carbon, um, carbon credits in the marketplace to offset their footprint. We've seen uh, a big move into that. We've seen a lot of talk about it. Uh, we've actually at ABEX set up a carbon neutral working group uh, with a very decent uh, core group of, of majors, um, major banks, brokers in the carbon industry and the LNG industry to find the right solution for this or to find a solution for it. Um, with a lack of standardization in global carbon offset markets right now, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to really find the right credits um, when you think about the amount of credits that are required to offset uh, a full shipment of LNG, say from Houston to China, it's quite substantial. And so, um, again, the marketplace is, is looking for the right solution for this. Um, I think you'll see a consolidation and, uh, and a move to more standardization in the carbon offset marketplace. Uh, you're seeing it already. You know, there's, there's a couple of platforms out there now that are offering uh, carbon, uh, carbon credits to the marketplace for, for LNG, for shipping. Um, but, but again, it's, it's not standardized and it's not exchange futures traded. It is an OTC instrument. So there is still bilateral credit risk between the buyer and the seller in the marketplace. And I think that's what ABEX will look to do is to, is to offer that alternative as a, as a risk mitigation tool for carbon and for obviously LNG futures in the marketplace. Yeah. I, I, can I just pick up on that? So, you know, you're talking about, uh, kind of global futures contracts. It seems like people are looking at standardization also for the kind of carbon neutral side of LNG. I mean, how mm -hmm. do you think is the most effective way that we're going to get there? Yeah, it's a problem because it's a voluntary market. It's hard to standardize it. So for right now, we see carbon markets specifically being traded as OTC instruments, non-futures traded. And so that's, that's the predominant way that the market has been uh, engaged with each other. Um, so really not in a, in a futures structure. We see that that will eventually develop uh, into a future structure contract um, that, uh, that the, the marketplace will need, especially as more participants um, uh, enter the marketplace. They may not have counterparty credit with each other, and so um, so they will uh, they will want to find a way to use futures where they can they can use the exchange as the credit uh, the credit counterparty or the credit mitigant uh, risk mitigation tool for for that marketplace. And looking to the the, the short term future, what can um, what can we expect from Abex Exchange? Yeah, you know, we're, we're obviously started out as an LNG futures exchange and, um, you know, we, we're looking at other products that we will be launching as futures down the, not too far down the road. Um, our, the genesis of the company, our founder, Josh Crum, had a, uh, he was uh, the head of uh, metals research at Goldman Sachs and uh, has a big background in mining and metals. And uh, Robert Friedland from Ivanhoe Mines is one of our main investors. And uh, obviously there's a this distinct desire to add other products uh, on the exchange that the marketplace needs that we feel has been underserved. But for right now, LNG is really the main, the main product focus for us uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, we see other products in the LNG marketplace that we'll need to develop. And the marketplace has told us that we need to, to launch to, uh, to better serve the marketplace. And just to talk a little bit about your personal career, um, how does a, a U.S. Um, ships officer then get into uh, yeah. LNG future exchange? <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's funny. I get that question a lot, Ali. I had it even over this this past weekend with some family and friends as we were uh, remembering 9-11. But I uh, had some, some some family friends always ask me, how do you get involved in, in energy markets after you're selling on ships? It's kind of an indirect route, I would say. Uh, you know, I sell in oil tankers, so there was some correlation to, to energy markets. Um, I was very fortunate to to have been a neighbor of Vinnie Viola, who was the chairman of the NYMEX back in the day, uh, back in 2001. And I met him who knew him very well, and he, uh, he hired me to come in to build a, uh, the, uh, the exchange's OTC clearing product, which was Clearport, which has really a lot of direct connectivity to what we're doing here at ABEX. So you look at, again, as we talked about, the LNG markets being uh, predominantly, and the carbon markets being predominantly OTC, and moving them into an exchange environment. So I have a lot of experience in that, and also uh, in building relationships with, with firms in the, in the trading community. And out of interest, then, with your ship's officer hat on, um, what do you see as the future of um, these big ships being powered by LNG as their fuel? Interesting. Really interesting, Ali. Yeah, we talk about that a lot. Um, I, I think 
it always, then I'm not an engineer, I was a, I was a navigation officer or one of the, the, uh, the actual um, cargo officers on the ships on this tanker. But a lot of my friends were engineers and I spent a lot of time in the engine room. And uh, they, you know, the propulsion systems of ships are generally not overly complex, but to change them from traditional fuels, whether it's diesel, ultra so, a low cell for diesel, uh, heavy fuel oil to, to LNG, certainly requires a lot of upgrades and, and modifications. So I, I think it's a great idea. You know, we even have people talking about ammonia now as, as propulsion fuels and, uh, and hydrogen obviously is a big talk also. So this is, there's a lot of creativity. I think as um, one of my former colleagues at Goldman, Jeff Curry said, you know, you give an engineer enough time and enough money, he'll find a, a solution to any problem. And I think we're seeing that here with the increase in gas, with the increase in, uh, in interest in, and obviously a net zero environment. And that, that'll certainly drive the, the move to different and, and, and better solutions for, for not only ship propulsion, but also in the LNG markets overall. But do you think that LNG is a good bridging fuel before they look at ammonia and hydrogen? Do you think LNG is a sort of a workable fuel at the moment? It is, yeah. It's a transition fuel for, for a lot of different things, right? You, you know, you hear, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of extremes on both sides of the argument around hydrocarbons in general. I mean, LNG is just, I mean, the EU even mentioned it several months ago that we can't get to uh, where we want to get with, with emissions and, and the environmental aspect of the marketplace without LNG, without natural gas. So it's an important transition fuel. It will be a transition fuel for, now, for shipping. For sure, you're I mean, seeing a lot of new ships being built with LNG capabilities for for propulsion. So, yeah, I think that's a that's an important step we'll see in the future. And Joe, we like to ask um, a lot of the leaders coming onto our show about both sort of legacy and impact. So, um, no time soon, I hope. But when it does come for you to sort of look yeah. back <laughs> at your career, um, what would you like your impact to have been? Yeah, I think, you know, I look at my impact from when I was at the NYMEX and what we built in the marketplace. And I think that that's a tool that became a global um, a global instrument that really um, was was really a uh, an important uh, instrument for the marketplace. You know, the Clearport product It was taking all of the products that traded in the OTC market and, and giving the, the, the traders an opportunity to to uh, to, to you know to trade them uh, without worrying about credit or risk. And so that was something that was a big deal. I mean, it became an important tool for the NYMEX and for the CME and for the global markets. And I felt that that was really um, something that I, that I feel as a legacy um, that I can look back on and say that I, I, you know, I helped build that and launched it. I had a great interaction with the marketplace. Uh, and I think that that's really something I, that I, I look, always look at and say that's hopefully going to be something that people will talk about for years to come. Well, I'm sure you will. Joe, thank you so much for joining us here. Good luck with ABEX Exchange. You've got a very busy and uh, exciting few months ahead for you. Thanks, Ali. Thanks, Will. Thanks for having me. And you have been watching the latest episode of LNG Leaders from myself and from Will. It's goodbye. LNG Leaders in association with Chenier Energy.